With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. So thank you, Lord, to you. With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. So Oh, 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 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us this Sunday morning for this wonderful service. I pray that you are having an amazing time. Uh, I pray that you are remaining faithful to the Word. Thank you uh, for being here with us, for supporting, for uh, doing what you ought to do. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says that in the presence of the Lord there is the fullness of joy, and at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah! Uh, my name is Femi Joe. You probably you've had that several times uh, before, and this is Strong Nation. Hallelujah! God has given us a word of Strong Nation, Isaiah 60, verse 22. God said that a little one uh, shall become a thousand, and a small one. A strong nation. Hallelujah. We are holding fast to that word because the word says that hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering. For his faithful who has promised, who also will do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we delve into the word today, I just want us to um, confess the word. Let's say good things about our lives. You know, the Bible says that we are ensnared by the words of our mouth. It's always good that we are ensnared by good things. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So I say I'm a believer. I believe the Word of God. The Word of God is my natural environment. I believe what it says about me. The Word of God says all things are possible unto him that believes. So all things are possible for me because I be, I'm a believer. I'm a child of God. I have the Spirit of Christ in me. My mind is sound. My body is full of health and vibrant. I am God's masterpiece. Hallelujah. I have the wisdom of Christ. I have insight, foresight, oversight, hindsight to all mysteries before the unfold. I do not live or walk by sight. I live by the faith in the Word of God. I have 20 20 perfect vision. I'm an ambassador for Christ. I represent heaven here on earth. Hallelujah. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. My resources never run dry. Hallelujah. Everything in righteousness that I lay my hands on prospers. I can do extraordinary things in extraordinary times. I am designed for success. I am coming out of this. In fact, I've, I've come, I, I'm out of it in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm completely out of this uh, pandemic in the name of Jesus. And I'm stronger and I'm better and I'm wiser than when it began. Hallelujah. I'm strong nation. That is who I am. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord God Almighty. Because we know that heaven and earth will pass away, but not one title, not one jot of your word will go unfulfilled. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us again. We, we, we really appreciate your support. Hallelujah. Uh, the feedback some of you have given us uh, has really encouraged us. Amen. I want you to prepare your bread and your wine today. It's going to be a communion service. 
uh, today. You know, Christ said, we should do this always uh, in remembrance of him till he comes. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you've not done it, I want you to prepare your bread and you prepare your wine. It's a communion service today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I have something um, that's been bubbling in my heart that I want to share with you today. I have something that's been bubbling in my spirit that I want to share with you today. Hallelujah. Please, let's take our Bibles and go to uh, the epistle or gospel, sorry, the gospel of um, John. The gospel of John. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The gospel of John. And let's take it from uh, chapter 2. Gospel of John, chapter 2. And I read from verse 1. It's a fairly long reading, but stay with me. Stay with me. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and the disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 4. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Verse 5. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purification of the Jews, containing two or three fire kings apiece, that is, 20 to 30 gallons um, uh, volume. Verse 7, Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pot with water. Fill the water pot with water. And they filled them up to the brain. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, that they may bear it. And when the ruler of the feast, that is the MC, had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servant which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men are well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine unto now. Verse 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth the glory and his disciples believed on him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the ministry of the world. Lord, as we go into your word today, O Lord God Almighty, Lord, bring out new things because the word says that the scribe that is instructed in the kingdom of God is like an householder that brings forth treasures both old and new. Freshen your word, O Lord God Almighty, in my mouth, O Lord God Almighty. Cause my tongue to be like the pen of a ready writer, O Lord God Almighty. Magnify your word in the hearts of your people, O Lord. Do something new in their lives, O Lord God Almighty. Father, add to their spiritual fabric. Make them stronger, O Lord God Almighty, than their enemy. Make obstacles in front of them become like pebbles. Father, Lord God Almighty, where there's a mess, Turn it into a message, O Lord God Almighty. Lord, let your light shine forth. Let the divine cause a breakthrough in every situation, O Lord God Almighty. Lord, strengthen every arm. Lift every shoulder up. Father, Lord God Almighty, every shaking knee, Lord, give strength to me. To it, O Lord. We bless you, Father. We magnify you. We exalt you, Lord. We lift you up on that. We thank you, Lord. We say, Great are you, Lord, and you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. I, I want to share with you something that I've titled New Wine, Good Wine. New Wine, Good Wine. If there's somebody beside you, give them an elbow and say, New Wine, Good Wine. If there's nobody beside you, beat yourself in the chest and say, New Wine, Good Wine. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a wonderful story. It's in the second uh, uh, chapter of um, uh, the book of John, like we've read. And there are some things that are peculiar about this story. The Bible tells us that this was the first miracle that Jesus Christ performed. And he performed the miracle at a wedding. Hallelujah. What a wonderful situation. Christ performed this his first miracle at a wedding, amen. They are so, that's so symbolic, it has a lot of significance. Uh, but I, I want to concentrate on certain aspects today. I am believing God for a turnaround uh, for you in the name of Jesus. As we have come out of this pandemic, I am believing God to do something great in your life. There are lessons here that if we absorb them and we, we follow them, I believe that like we have confessed, that we, we will be stronger. Huh? A little shall become a thousand, and a small one will become a strong nation. Hallelujah. Amen. And they are, when you look at this, um, this story, uh, there are key people that you need to look at. There. You will see Mary there. You will see Jesus there. You will see the servants that were serving there. You will see the governor. And then you will see the groom. The Bible tells us specifically that these people do, uh, did. And the Bible tells us, ended up in verse uh, 11, telling us that this is the first miracle that Christ performed. And this is so important. Whenever the, the Bible is mentioning something as first, it's telling you that you can use this as a template for that particular concept, for that particular entity. So it is for a good reason that the Bible mentioned that this is the first miracle that Christ performed. So when we look at certain aspect of it, you will find out that uh, some things will, will, will become clear to you. You'll be able to walk in the reality of certain things. Amen. I, I will be teaching and I will be preaching and I will be praying in between. Hallelujah. Because I want results from uh, this Sunday service. Amen. Uh, in, both in my life, in the life of strong nature, and in your life. I want testimonies to flow like a river. Amen. So be ready uh, that for, for prayer. And I want you to pray like you have never prayed before. When I say you pray like you've never prayed before. I want you to pray with passion. I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The first thing I want you to, 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 to know is let's look at the definition of what a miracle is. I say a miracle is a temporary suspension of the natural law to achieve a necessary end. It's a temporary suspension of a natural law to achieve a necessary end. Whether it's the Red, Reef, um, Red Sea breaking into, into two, seas are not meant to break into two, but the Red Sea broke into two. That's why we call it in a miracle. Whether it's Jordan stopping from afar off so that the children of Israel could pass through, Rivers are meant to flow continually. So there was a suspension of that. Even Christ ascending on high, it was a miracle because gravity was suspended so that Christ could ascend on high. So, miracles, when miracles happen, there is a natural suspension there's, a, there's a, sus, a temporary suspension of the natural laws. Amen. And God has designed it that on occasions uh, he will suspend the natural laws. Don't forget that God was in, in the, in the one who put those natural laws there themselves. And they are good. But in certain circumstances, God will temporarily suspend them to achieve an end. Amen. Let's 
let's take this story in two parts. Look, look at the, the groom. When the let's let's read what happened to, to, to the groom. And I will take this from uh, verse 9. When the ruler of the feast attested the water that was made, that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servant which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine unto now. Listen, when there's a miracle, he dumbfounds people. He, he breaks protocols. He suspends natural laws. Any logical explanation stops. The MC, the governor, who was in charge of everything, who knew where everything was, when he tasted this wine, he realized that this wine was not the original wine. But he then went to the groom and took it up. He, he, he took it on the, in the groom. It attacked the groom. I, I'm saying that when God intervenes with a miracle, there's a reaction. There will be a reaction from your side. There will be a reaction from people who are watching. Amen. Because what you are seeing is the back end of that miracle. Now, look at uh, the, the, um, the groom. How was he supposed to react? A miracle has happened. He didn't even know about it. The guy didn't even know that there was a problem. Eh? The problem got solved better than he could have solved it. And now he's being accused. That happens when a miracle happens in your life. I, I've come to find out that there are some things that has happened in my life. When people tell me after that, uh, um, uh, the things that have happened and how God intervened, at times I am shocked. God has moved on my behalf. I did not know what has happened. Uh, and at times people attack you not knowing that you didn't even know that a miracle had happened. They accuse you of doing what you've not done. But please, uh, let me put it this way. Let uh, I pray that people uh, will accuse you of good things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that miracles will happen in your life and people who do not understand how it had happened even you that did not know how to have it had happened, they will come and accuse you uh, of that good that has happened in your life. That's what happened to this guy. This guy knew nothing about the wine. God has wrought a miracle on his behalf without his having to know it. God has solved a big problem that he had without him realizing that he had a problem. So I want you to begin to pray that in my life, it is not every battle that I can fight. God, fight my battle for me even before I know that that battle exists. Lord, let me hear of the tail end of that battle. Let me hear of the victory. Because you have said I am more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror does not need to go to war. More than a, than a conqueror is the one who spends the good. Amen. I want you to begin to confess that God, I want your intervention, Lord, even before I know about it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there's nothing as sweet as somebody coming to you and say, this has happened, oh, how did you do it? And you are looking at them and you say, is this what God has saved me from? Praise the Lord. Secondly, I want you to pray that in your life, no matter what you are experiencing now, what you will experience in future will be better than what you are experiencing now. In other words, 
God will keep the best to the last. Amen. Listen, if everything is good for you now, I'm telling you there's something called better. If there's something better, if something better is happening in your life, something best is about to happen. Something more excellent. Today will be the poorest that you have ever been, even if you are you 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 you, you, you are you are a millionaire. If your health is vibrant, I say believe God that tomorrow you will have greater strength. If you are in business and people are coming to you now that your business does not have any space, I pray that tomorrow you will need came into being. Amen. And I want to I want us to look at these things and be able to replicate it. I will show you examples of other miracles and Make sure you will see that in reality, this is the pattern of God. Amen. The first thing I want you to know is that you see, miracles are provoked by needs. Miracles are provoked by need. They don't just happen. They, they ought to be a need first. And when there's a need, you can do certain things, you can touch the divine so that miracle then happen in your in your in your own instance. Every one of us, no matter how spiritual you are, you are, no matter how good you are, no matter how um, how how mature you are, you will find your back against the wall at one point or the other. When you find your back against the wall and you everything seems to be over, if you understand why miracles happen, you can tap into it, you can reach into it. Joshua knew this. He had seen Moses perform several miracles. So at in in, in, in Joshua chapter 10. When he was dealing with their enemies and the sun was about to go down, and he realized that if he left the remnants of these people till the next day, they could regroup, he told the sun to stop so that they could see and finish the work. There was a need. Hallelujah, amen. Praise the Lord. Lazarus. There was still work for him to do. So Christ called him back to life. Amen. The children of Israel, they needed to go into the promised land and the Jordan was before them. So there was a need. Amen. When blind Bartimaeus stood before Christ, Christ asked him, what would you have me do for you? The first thing you must identify is the need in your life. And when I say identifying the need in your life, you must go to the root in your, of what you need in your life. If you are struggling in terms of your health, huh, you need to go to the root of what the problem is to attack it. Amen. Are you getting what, what I'm saying? In this uh, wedding, Mary, the mother of Jesus, realized the source of the problem. The source of the problem is that they have no more wine. People don't stay in wedding when the wine finishes. For that wedding to reach its natural conclusion, certain ingredients need to be flowing. And in this case, it was wine that was needed. Uh, she knew that when there was, if there was wine, the music would keep going on, everybody would keep jollificating, everybody would keep doing what, whatever they ought to do. So she went to Christ and said, they have no more wine. If you do not know 
your specific need, I want you to pray that God will open your eyes of understanding so that you will know what your need is. If you have a business, what you need is not money. What you need is you need people to patronize your business. You need your business to become vibrant. Amen. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? We all need to identify what we need. Amen. You know, blind Bartimaeus would have told Christ that I need money. Christ would have given him money and he would have remained blind. But he went down into the source of what his need was. And he told Christ that I might see. A lot of us do not know what we need. And to know what you need, you need God to speak into your heart. You need God to remove the fluff so that you will know what your need is. That is where things start from. When Joshua was going to ask his son to stop, he didn't say God should kill his, um, uh, his, his enemies. He, he, God has given him the power to do that. What he needed was light so that he can see. So the first thing we need to do is, God, please, show me my need if I don't know. Amen. In this first miracle of Christ, the first thing that was addressed was that Mary identified the need of the people. And she went to Christ and said, they have no more wine. Hallelujah. When the 5,000 men were with, with Christ and they were in the desert place and they needed to be fed, what the disciples were talking about was the problem. Was the problem. Christ said, feed them. The need there was that those people, they needed to be fed. Amen. I have seen people who, when you ask them, what exactly is the problem? What they tell you is different from what actually will solve their problem. As easy, as straightforward as that might be, until you know what your need is, you will struggle. What you will get will be temporary solution to your problem. But your need should go to the root of your problem. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second thing you, 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 you will see here is that someone needs to stand in the gap. This groom was with his bride. He was about to experience a calamity, a disaster. He did not know about it. But Mary stood in the gap for him. You don't understand what I'm saying. You, you need an intercessor. You need somebody to intercede for you. A, an intercessor eh, is somebody who takes care of your deficiency, even when you don't know. Let me repeat that. An intercessor is somebody that brings two ends eh, of your problem to meet so that the problem disappears. Amen. This guy had an intercessor. Mary was invited there, but she realized that she needed to intercede on behalf of this guy when the guy does, did not even know that he has a problem. Uh, listen to me. Uh, Proverbs 17, 17 says that a friend loves us all times. A brother is meant for the day of adversity. What that is telling you is that your friend should be there for you to rest on at every time. In the day of adversity, those who are left with you, interceding with you, eh, or for you, they are your brothers. Amen. It's not talking about biological brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 20 says that may God answer you in the day of trouble. 
the next verse said that he said, May he send help from his holy ear. When God sends help, God sends intercessor for you. Amen. People who will stand in the gap. People who will hold your hand. Moses was a powerful man. But when it came to the time that he needed to stretch the rod for a long time, he needed all and Aaron to hold his hands. They were interceding for him. He was interceding for Joshua. They were interceding for him because he needed strength. Amen. Romans chapter 8 from verse 25. Verse 25 says that hope that is seen is not hope. But when we hope for the things that are not seen, then we patiently wait for it. Verse 26 now says that likewise the sweet helps our infirmity. For we know not what we ought to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us by groaning that cannot be uttered. Verse 27 now says that he that searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit and prays according to the will of God. That is proper intercession. Amen. That passage says that a time will come that you have identified the need, but you do not even know how to pray about it. But that is when you need the Holy Spirit. You have hope, but you cannot see that thing that you are hoping for, and you are waiting patiently. So the Bible says that likewise, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us by Groanings that cannot be altered. The Holy Spirit takes together with us. Amen. In Isaiah 63 verse 5, God said, I looked at them and I wish there was an intercessor, but I could not find any man. So I decided to bring salvation by my own hand. Christ coming to the earth was a miracle. God inhabiting the body of men, taking the sin of men on his body so that we can be free was a miracle. But God needed somebody to intercede on our behalf. And because there was nobody that could intercede, God said, I took it upon myself to become their intercessor. God the Father told God the, 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 uh, the Son that we need to intercede for these people. Do you know that Romans 8 tells us that the current ministry of Christ, now is that ministry of intercession, the Bible tells us that Christ is on the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. Listen, if you want a miracle to happen in your life, you need an intercessor. Amen. Whether you know it or not, if you, you are to prevent shame from intervening into your celebration, you need an intercessor, whether you know it or not. Praise the Lord. And you see, intercessors are peculiar people. Did you notice that Mary did not go to the bridegroom, did not go to the MC? She did not ask the people she would clap for her. She did not ask for any accolade. Intercessors, they are selfless people. The love of God must flow through the heart of of intercessors, compassion must flow through them. Lord, bring my intercessors. Ah, hallelujah, amen. Lord, quicken my intercessors in the name of Jesus. Ah. We need intercessors, amen. We need intercessors. Intercessors intervene without anybody prompting them. Amen. Intercessors don't complain. Mary did not go to the bridegroom to ask him, why is it that you've not supplied enough wine? Why is it that the wine that you brought is, uh, uh, is cheap? Why is it? No. She saw the need. She filled the gap. She stood up. Intercessors no more. They don't, they don't grumble. 
They know you are not perfect. But they know you need a miracle. Amen. Intercessors, they are special people. For you to have a miracle in your life, you need an intercessor. Listen, I, I need to talk about this uh, intercession a bit more. Did you know that because Mary was the intercessor of this groom, she gave Christ a knowledge. Even Christ did not know that his ministry was supposed to start. She was telling the mom that, listen, my time is not yet. But she never argued with him because she knew in her heart, there was a prompting in her heart that something needed to be done right now. Otherwise, disaster will happen. I need a miracle, Father. Let's, let's just pray. I want you to lift up your hands and say, wherever my intercessors are in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they will not look at my deficiency, uh, they will not look at my, uh, at my failings, that the love of God, the compassion of God will move them. Uh, they will intervene, they will pray through for me in the name of Jesus. Uh, they will hold my hands uh, like uh, Aaron and all held the hand of Moses. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that in strong nation for me, I we have very powerful intercessors. Amen. I, I, I cannot deny that. I really don't want to mention um, um, uh, names, but we have powerful intercessors, amen. If it were not so, uh, the things that we are saying we will not see. So you need an intercessor in the name of Jesus, and you need a, an intercessor that will be selfless, that will fill the gap, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When your intercessors they fill the gap. That there will be a word. Look at when Mary prompted Christ and told them that they have no wine. And Christ said, Woman, what is my problem with you? My time is not yet come. She did not respond to Christ. She turned to the servant and said, Whatsoever he says, do it. She knew that a word will come. Words, huh? Huh? A capsules for miracles. Go and check my yeah. words. Uh, a capsules for miracles. Christ then turned to these people and said, Fill the pots with water. Words will come from the throne of grace, it will be bathed into your heart. It is called prophecy. It will quicken your situation and it will back miracle if you do the right thing with it. If you take hold of it and run with it. Remember in uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, the man Ezekiel was in the valley of dry bones. And God asked him, Ezekiel, can this, he was having a vision, God said, can this bone leave? And he said, God knows, Lord. God then told him to speak a word to those dry bones. And Ezekiel said, I did as I was commanded. God said, say to dry bones, leave. Remember that God did not tell dry bones to leave. God said to Ezekiel, say to dry bones, leave. God spoke the word into his heart. God gave him the word. And he then spoke the word out. Amen. And Ezekiel spoke to dry bones and dry bone leave. You need a word. Amen. You need a word. Whether you are the widow whose um, husband, the, the son of the prophet, has died leaving a lot of death. Whether you are the man whose axe head has dropped into the water. Or whether you 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 whether you are uh, uh, Peter, that has toiled all night, you need a word. You need a word. You need a word. God does not work on sentiment. God works, works on his word. 
His word he has exalted above his name. You need to prepare your heart for a word. Amen. The word might be rise up and walk. The word might be go to Zarephath. I have uh, commanded a widow to feed you there. The word does not need to make sense to you eh? as long as it makes sense to, to God and it's a direction towards your miracle. Amen. So Christ told these people, fill the pot with water. It wasn't water that they needed, but the man who had the word said they should fill the pot with water. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look, Isaiah verse 10, uh, chapter 13 from verse 20. He says that even though God gives you a bread of, um, of adversity and gives you water of affliction, your teacher shall not be put in the corner. They will always be in your face. There will always be a voice behind you say, this is the way. Walk ye in it. When you move to the left or to the right, I like the way the New Living Translation puts it. It says, even if God gives you uh, bread, um, adversity as bread and makes you drink affliction, He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always give you a word so that you will know where to turn to the right or where to turn to the left. God will send a word. Amen. That is when you need to fine-tune your receiver in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, God is so loving. Amen. We are talking about how this miracle happened. And you can apply it to your life too. You can get the new wine that is the good wine. Amen. I need a miracle, oh Lord. Amen. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I need a word from you. I need my intercessors to wake up. I, I need my need to be identified in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I said there was a spoken word. Hallelujah. Peter in Luke chapter 5 was going to face a disaster. He had toiled all night, nothing had happened. Christ in verse 4 said, drop down the nets for a drought. That word does not make sense. Nobody catches fish during the day. Amen. When the fish can see you. Christ gave him the word. When Elijah stood before uh, King Hill, he said, by my word. I need a word. You need a word. You need a word. We are, in Hebrews chapter 6, we are told that we, we have the word of God, which is, which is like an anchor that goes beyond the veil. You need to prepare your heart for the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, this word came... When uh, Gabriel showed up to Mary, he said, "You that are you are you are you are you are, you are favored and highly blessed." And he said, "Listen, the Holy Spirit will come upon you; the Holy One will overshadow you, and the, 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 that thing in your in your in your in your belly will, will gain life." Hallelujah. He gave her a word. And in verse 37, he told her, no word of God shall be without power. Also, the Bible says that with God, nothing shall be possible. Because God and his word, they are one and the same. Amen. You need a word. I need a word. Amen. I need a miracle. God gave me a word that we should write three impossible or seven impossible things. Then wrap it with faith. That is a word. For each of those things that God has given me, I have now asked God for a word for each of them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For every word that you have, you must obey. 
Don't forget that our friend and the servants, they didn't ask Christ that we are saying we should put water in the pot. What we need is wine. What they did was they obeyed the word. Well, as long as word makes sense to God, that yeah, it doesn't need to make sense to you. Christ told them, put what they said they need wine. Christ said, put water in pot. What they did was they put water in pot. But because they obeyed the first word, they got the second word. God now said, take that water eh, and go and serve. And go and serve the MC. And as the, I, I believe that as they took the water, it was when they were on their way that the water became wine. Amen. When the people were with Christ in the wilderness and they were hungry, Christ told the disciples to tell those people to sit down in groups. Uh, is it sitting down in groups that will fill their tummy? But they obeyed that first. The word that you have received now, I'm encouraging you to hold on to that word and walk that word. Amen. You need to be submitted to the word. You need to be obedient to the word. You need to be uh, to 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 walk the word. Amen. It is in the first word that you get the second word. In Luke chapter five, verse five, Peter said, "We have told all night and we caught nothing, but nevertheless at thy word." You see, it doesn't matter where your obedience comes, um, whether you first argue, eh? as long as you end up, end up obeying. Because God will not give you a second word without the first word. Amen. Moses stood before the Red Sea in um, Exodus chapter 11 and told the children of Israel, that the Egyptians who sit today, you will not see tomorrow. Then she fell down and cried unto God. God said, why are you crying unto me? I say, tell them to move forward. If they didn't move forward, the rest will not part. In, uh, in, in Joshua, God took it further. God told them that they should put their feet, the priests, should put their feet in the water. It was when they put their feet in the water that the Jordan stopped. You need to obey the first word, then another word will follow. I can tell you the reason why that, but we don't have the time. There's no point God giving you a multitude of word and you not obeying. So, when you are you are looking for a miracle. When your need demands a miracle, when your intercessor has stood in the gap for you and they have prayed through for you, when the Holy Spirit is ministering to your heart, like we have read, and you get the first word, don't scrutinize the word. Uh, don't, um, don't break the word into pieces. Don't ask yourself, does it make sense? Proverbs 5, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 says that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Amen. Look, we are all schooled. We are all intelligent people. But the word humble means to be submitted to God. James chapter 4, verse 7 says that submit to God, huh? then resist the devil. The word submit to God means obey God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm saying there's a word coming your way this week. There is a word coming your way this week. Don't, 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 don't put that word on scale. As long as you know the word is from God, I want to encourage you to obey the word. God has given us some very strange words. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. God told us that he will appoint a place for us himself. God said he will plant us there, that we will not move again. God said he will do it so that we will not be oppressed again. Look, 
when I sit down and analyze that it does not make sense, but if God said it, then it's true. Because let God be true and every other man be a liar, so that you are justified in your sin and overcome when you are judged. Amen. So I'm encouraging you to obey the word. Mary now said in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, So be it unto me according to your word. Look, how do you go and tell the man that you are betrothed to, that you've not married, that you, he has not taught you, that you are pregnant? But God saw the problem for her. God not only made her pregnant, God went and told Joseph himself, Hallelujah, amen. That is a miracle, amen. Now, the last part. Listen, when you get a miracle, you need to solidify your miracle. You, you, your, need, your miracle needs to stand sure. You see, miracles come and go. But those who understand miracle know what to do eh, to keep that miracle intact. Look at verse 11, verse 11 of John chapter 2. It says, the beginning of miracles of did Jesus Christ in King of Galilee and manifested forth the glory and his disciples believed on him. Every miracle must bring glory to God. You must always point to God. Amen. Because God will not share his glory with anybody. If you want your miracle to be established, if you want your miracles to last, if you want your miracle to endure, if you want your miracles uh, uh, to 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 defeat all challenges that is thrown at it. Hmm? You must always give glory to God. You cannot express a miracle, then start saying you are clever. Start saying you are the one that did it. Amen. This guy, the uh, uh, bridegroom, he had no clue, but he saw the miracle. You must be like that man, I think in, is it in John chapter 8 or John chapter 5, who said, listen, whether it's a sinner or not, but one thing I know, I was blind before, but now I can see. What he's saying is that, don't confuse me with your theology. I know who to give glory to. Giving praise, giving glory to God establishes your miracle. Amen. It is wanting to be healed. It is wanting to stay healed. Huh? It is one thing to have a business. It is one thing for your business to keep expanding. It is one thing to speak the word today. It is another thing for the word to keep rolling out of your mouth like rivers of living waters. Amen. The Bible said, listen, because of this miracle, the disciples believed Christ. Not only did they believe Christ, but they gave glory to God. I say this this week, we are going to give glory to God. God, a, a miracle is coming your way. I say the word of God is coming to your way. Your, your intercessors, I will say in the name of Jesus, begin to pray with me that God will quicken them. They will stand in the gap. The Holy Spirit will minister to your heart in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says that we get to a point that hope that we see is not really hope. But what we hope for, if we patiently wait for it, uh, yes, it will manifest. But likewise, the Holy Spirit himself, uh, Helps our infirmity, our inadequacy, sir. He takes together with us, sir. The Holy Spirit, He intercedes with us with groanings that cannot be uttered because the Holy Spirit searches the mind, searches the heart of the Spirit and knows what the will of God is. The will of God is that you prosper and be in hell. The will of God is that you are not in bondage to any, anything around you in the name of Jesus. Let's spend some time praying in the name of Jesus. I speak to that business in the name of Jesus. I speak to that business in the name of Jesus. I said there will be demand beyond your capacity in the name of Jesus. You will need to call your partners in. 
just like Peter called him the partners in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus, your two fishes and five loaves will feed more than 5,000 people and you will, be happy. you will have left enough. Miracles are coming your way this week in the name of Jesus. I speak to every obstacle. I speak to every shame that want to interfere into your celebration. Maki Lashi Mande Kale Mangrabo Jikandeliaba Mandelebo Kotoliandalaba Minkate Yandelia. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Father, we magnify you, Lord. Ah, we lift you on our hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, there will be some of you. Uh, in the prayer we pray is uh, for those who are already Christians, uh, for those who already know Christ. If you are here, you do not know Christ. Everything I've said could be like water on the back of the dog. But I want to encourage you now this. We have this opportunity for you to accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Not just as your Savior, but as your Lord and your Savior. And I want you to say with me, from the depth of your heart and confess with your mouth, because the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. I want you to say, Christ, I come before you with all humility of heart. I recognize your completed work on the cross. I recognize that you died for my sin so that I will no longer be a sinner. I receive that offer. I submit myself into it. I confess that sin right now in, in, in your name. I leave that sin and that life behind. I accept your provision for me by faith. From today, I am a child of God. All things have passed away. New things have become new. Uh, old, uh, old, uh, new uh, old things have passed away. And all things have become new. I am a child of God. I am a believer. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that um, what we've shared today uh, has really touched your heart. Uh, I, you, you can feel my heart. I, 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 I believe there are certain circumstances facing um, all of us that we need a miracle, that we need something to break through for us, uh, that we need God to suspend the natural laws in the name of Jesus. Uh, people who think they don't need a miracle are people who have limited vision. Uh, just this story is so important because it showed that the bridegroom, shame, uh, was just around the corner and he didn't know about it. But God intervened. And I've had stories of how God intervened on behalf of people and even on my behalf. I had stories not even long ago, the way God intervened on my behalf, and I did not know, I, I, I had no clue, but God fought my battle. Those, that is what miracles does, but more than, more than any other time, as we are moving, as the season is changing, we, we need great miracles. Strong mission needs miracles in the name of Jesus. Uh, we're going to share uh, the, the bread, and the wine, hallelujah, because I believe that, you see, words like this, we need to solidify it, we, we need to cement it with, uh, with the word of God, and uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the bread and wine. You know, Christ said we must always do this in remembrance of him, so that we can know the provision that Christ has made for us, hallelujah, amen. I, I want to encourage you to do it by faith, amen. Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, Christ took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body that was broken for you. And when you go into Ephesians chapter 2, you will know the significance of that. That when, Christ, when the, body, the body of Christ was broken, when we break the bread, what it does is that it removes the partition between us and God. Amen. It's a reminder, it's an emblem, it's an energizer. Amen. 
So, Father, we, we, we believe your word. So, we take your word. We say this is the body of Christ. We will speak life into it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say there's no enmity between us and you anymore. Yeah. Let your love flow. Let us, let, let, us, let us comprehend that love so that we can walk with boldness. In Jesus' name we pray. Christ took the wine and said, this wine is my blood of the atonement. You know, God keeps revealing things to us. What that means is that there's no more enmity between us and God when we break the bread. But with the wine, it says the devil has no hold on you anymore because it has been paid for. Amen. And it has been paid in full. Not only has it been paid in full, the Bible says that the price that was paid that was more than what was owed. Amen. So, this gives us confidence that what God has said about us is going to come to pass. This week, I want you to believe you will receive miracles. It is not something that you'll be able to explain. Just like the groom, you will not be able to explain how it happened. Amen. So that you can give the glory to God. So I want you to go ahead and take the wine. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us. I really appreciate it. I am really believing God for an avalanche of miracles in your life. Please, can you send this testimony in as they begin to happen so that we can give glory to God? You see, it, 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 it strengthens our belief. Hallelujah. Amen. And I tell you, this is the first miracle that Christ has performed, but this will not be the last miracle in your life. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. We say, have a great week. Have an amazing time. And your miracle will be established in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.